data and urban stories. I love that. Uh, some of you who might have heard me talk this morning, I was talking about the need to recover a gap between the city as a space, complex space, and technologies. There's a kind of invisibility that attaches to that gap, hence the work of recovering, making, constituting, giving that gap content. And I call that urbanizing technology. Now, urban stories and data, huge gap. Uh, data and knowledge gap too, information and knowledge gap. So I find myself dwelling in the gaps. I sort of like that. Um, it seems to me that when you have data, it can travel in many, many different directions. We know that. But for it to become knowledge or for it to become a story actually needs a kind of participation on the part of the one who experience it, experiences that data as a story, as knowledge. Um, so in that sense, for me, uh, knowledge is a far more complex category than data, and so are urban stories, a far more complex category than data. Now, I would not know how to exist if I didn't have access to all these data sets that I use. I use a lot of data on finance, on whatever, on all kinds of things. So I'm not against data when I say that. But I do think that, that what matters is to recognize these, the difference between these three categories, knowledge, data, and in this case, we add stories. Now, thinking of urban stories vis-a-vis -vis all of these data that become available, um, I mean, one, one thing that I imagine is that the one who experiences the urban story that might evolve out of a data set or the one that projects a story onto a data set is an active participant in that outcome. You cannot simply, I think, be a consumer. You know, there, there is some, or somebody has to do it, but there has to be something. The data by themselves do not give you the urban stories. I think that, that is pretty clear. I thought Mark uh, gave some very great examples about that. So, so what is it about digitized data? Because we're talking about a certain, if I got it right, we're really talking about a certain kind of data, a data that has already been constituted in some way by, uh, by a whole range of technological innovations. Uh, it's not, you know, archives. There are their own kinds of archives, but it's not what we typically call archives. So there already is something that has happened to this information insofar as it is digitized. And that something for me is part of a trajectory. Time one, it is an innocent event. Okay, you have trans translated, you have moved huh? uh, what could be on paper, could be facts out there, onto something that we relate to as a data set. That, there is a construction in that. The fact that it is digitized and the fact that we're bringing into the picture an actor such as the urban means a lot of very interesting things. Because one thing about digit, I have a whole other approach into this that is not the urban stories approach, but I'm trying to connect it to urban stories. I like that. But I connect it to the fact of knowledge. So my question is, let me just give you that. I mean, um, my question is, what happens to knowledge? And I'm thinking again, I always bring in a temporal dimension because I think when you bring in a temporal dimension into something, you see other things. Other things can happen. So my question then becomes, and I'll get to urban stories at the end, hopefully. Um, my, my question then is, what happens to knowledge and knowledge systems? Because knowledge often is a system. You know, it has particular logics that organize it, etc. What happens to a knowledge system when that knowledge is digitized? And I think that interesting things happen. When it is digitized, certain kinds of interventions are possible. Now, when I say interventions, I don't mean necessarily something good or something bad. It is a variable, as I, anybody who's heard me talk knows that I say that a lot. They can be very good, they can be very interesting, they can be bad time one, very good time two, who knows? 
but a temporal dimension is inserted. Now, why do I say this about digitized knowledge? I'm talking about accessible knowledge. I'm talking about knowledge that you can actually take some elements out of, maybe add. You know, I'm talking about a certain kind of possibility, a mobility, if you want, that does not have to do necessarily with manipulation, but there is something mobile once it is digitized. It can travel. It can travel in different directions. One bit of knowledge in a certain kind of knowledge system can travel a bigger distance than the other. You have already altered the logic that organizes that knowledge system with which you started. So I think that one very um, uh, perhaps overwhelming way to put it is that there is a capacity to informalize knowledge, where knowledge often is thought of as some sort of formalized system that has a logic of you know, priorities, uh, you know, key vectors that organize it. Because again, knowledge is not simply a data set, and knowledge is not simply a bit of, you know, of you know, all kinds of information. So in that informalizing, whether it is explicit or not, whether it is partial, rough, or very refined and very elusive, it doesn't matter. But in that informalizing, something has happened. And here I segue into your beautiful urban stories, because I really like that. I'm working. Yeah? I'm struggling. You are seeing me work here. I'm trying to build a little bridge. Uh, so in, in that informalizing, you have constructed a kind of story. If the setting is a city or the urban, if the knowledge is about the city, am I talking too loud? What? Oh, OK then you are beginning to tell an urban story. And so the question that I have, and it comes a bit from hearing you, not only now, but another time too in your book. When we say urban story, as opposed to story, you know, a story can be urban, not urban, etc. We say urban story, are we also talking about a particular genus of stories? Are we also then, next step, in a context of digitized knowledge systems, data sets that become available, <laughs> to different things. Are we producing a new type of urban story? Urban stories have existed forever. Are we actually beginning to be able to tell stories where the data are the actors? And we show the data, you know, cut across, like the famous, you know, the garbage. So wonderful, the environmental, you know, we're going to track it. This is because a lot of that was meant to be uh, um, uh, g garbage that was to be processed environment in an environmentally sustainable ways. That cup of coffee, you are all familiar with this, right? That travels 3,000 miles to be environmentally, travels in a truck or in a train. Clearly, there is an ironic twist to that, you understand? So am I, have I lost you or not? I'm talking about the Sensei Lab story, right? The, 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 so you discover, oh my god, is this the way we do environmental, uh, what do we call it, recycling of garbage by using trucks that travel 3,000 miles? That's the worst possible scenario in a way. So, so the intriguing thing for me is a new type of urban story. It is not that, you know, we have a whole range of sort of classic notions of the urban story with certain kinds of mysteries and building. The buildings become actors, actants, etc. Um, but this is a different kind of story. Imagine if we could use these data sets, these vast amounts of data sets that we have, to begin to tell urban stories about urban data sets, or I don't know if also data sets, you know, but that the data themselves, because they are mobile, and there is a power, I mean, I, you can easily recognize the power of a knowledge system. It's more difficult to recognize the knowledge of a data set, because a data set is sort of a slightly amorphous thingy. But the problem is that elements of that data set get brought into particular kinds of knowledge systems. So the ones who do the recycling, they say, oh, we are so good. We do recycling. They don't tell you that the coffee cup, partly because they don't know it, that the coffee cup traveled 3,000 miles across the United States. In other words, a disaster, environmentally speaking. Right? So is it possible, actually, to launch if you want? This is my moment of play. This morning, I was very serious. OK, so now I'm just experimenting here um, to produce a kind of urban story that has data as its actor, 
but that also shows something, the drama of data, you know. Like I say, some, some sort of more architecturally minded uh, novelists have produced these extraordinary novels of, uh, of buildings, where the building is the actor. Can we do that with data? And in so doing, can we actually make visible, bring to light all kinds of strange things? So we elevate data to urban story and thereby make it tell a tale that it might not be able to tell if it's just a little data set. Thank you.